Today I've got five more sunflower DIYs for you. Keep watching. I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own DIYs. The first project is a sunflower tray. I am going to choose some paint. I do change this out shortly. I've got two drawer pulls. I have some white chalk paint and a sponge brush. Some of this beautiful fabric from Dollar Tree. And this little piece of framed art, which I think came from Dollar General. I'm also gonna be using Mod Podge for this project. I'm gonna start off by taking the screws out of the handles. And these are like a matte black, but I decided to use some of this rich espresso. It's slightly metallic instead of the spray paint. I'm gonna use a little bit of hot glue to put these handles down to make it easier for them to paint. These will peel up very easily after your paint is dry and you won't have to worry about getting paint all over your hands. So I'm gonna add a little bit down here on my scrap cardboard. I'm gonna offload a good bit of that paint and then kind of give it a, a dry brush with the stencil brush. I'm gonna go back and forth just like this all the way over the top, underneath, and around the bottom. And this is how it will look. And we're gonna put it aside and let it dry. So here's this beautiful fabric. It's a different print that I used in my other sunflower video, which I will have linked. But I think it's still a really great um, summer or late summer sunflower print. We're gonna take this apart. It easily pushes out, the backing does. I'm going to take off the tag and take off the hanger. Oh, I love it when it peels off easily. Look at that. Beautiful. Okay, so now I'm just gonna put a little of my chalk paint on here. It's getting thick. I've had it a while and it is really getting thick. It's time for me to get some more. I'm just going to add this on here. I only do one coat because I just want to have it thick enough that it will make the white on the fabric pop. I don't want the brown to show through at all. I'm gonna take that same Rich Espresso same brush and just kind of lightly brush over the outside of this brown frame just so that's a little more cohesive with the handles we're using i think it gives it a really pretty look now you can see that the white is very crisp on this background so i'm just measuring off as much as i'm going to need i don't like to waste because i like to do as many projects as i can with what i have i'm gonna cut off add my mod podge and I'm gonna do this all the way around, especially on the sides. And then once I get a good coat on there, I'm going to lay my fabric down, pull it and stretch it out. That's the good thing about fabric. You can just move it around and you won't even have a wrinkle. No ironing necessary. I'm pressing it down on my edges, my corners, and I'm gonna take my Mod Podge roller and roll it out to make sure that it is bubble free and that every bit of that fabric is attached down to the backing. So to make it a little more manageable, I'm just, now that I've got it on there, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the excess. I'm not gonna cut it completely down straight yet. I'm gonna add a good thick coat of Mod Podge over the top of that, and I'm going to be sure that I get over the entire thing, including the middle and all of the edges. You'll almost see like, see the white on the outline there because I want to make sure that that is stuck down nicely. I'm going to prop it up so that it can dry. It takes a while for the Mod Podge to dry and once it is dry you can go ahead and trim it down to the size of the backing. This doesn't have to be perfect because again it's going to be underneath the, the frame and you won't be able to see any rough edges. Unless of course that kind of thing bothers you then you know you do what you need to do. You could also definitely sand this, but the, the cutting is a little bit quicker when you don't have to be perfect. So then the frame will sit back on it like this. I'm gonna flip it over. And thankfully, it just pretty much pushes back down into that frame or that outer ring. Just pops back down in there. And then, of course, just to make sure everything stays together and doesn't come loose, I'm going to take my Gorilla Glue in my little glue gun here and just go around and kind of seal off the edges. 
I'm going to be using this as a decorative piece and I do not intend to put anything heavy on here or lift it by the handles, nothing like this. This is just for decoration. So I think it's great already, but I wanna add these handles. My handles and the, the framed art, they came from the thrift store. And then of course the fabric came from Dollar Tree. So I'm gonna add them to each end and it's easy to center these because I have a line in the middle so you can kind of see where it goes. And then press them down and let them dry. Again, I'm not lifting with those handles so I'm not concerned about whether or not it stays down permanently. Totally okay with it. The next one is a sunflower pitcher. So these little pitchers come from the Dollar Tree. And they come in a variety of colors, but this is the one that I found. I'm gonna use some Spanish moss chalk paint. I love this beautiful green. I have flat paintbrush and a variety of ribbons. I'm also gonna have some jute and this piece of fabric. Now, first off, I'm gonna cover up this beautiful terracotta and I'm covering it because it doesn't really match what I am doing here. Otherwise, I love the color. I'm gonna take this flat brush dip into my paint and just drag along where the paints overlap so that you can see that terracotta underneath the white. I'm starting at that line right above it. And I'm going to do this all the way around just to get a nice clean line. If you don't have um, the dexterity, you know, if you don't have a nice um, smooth hand, feel free to tape it off. I don't really care if mine is completely straight. I'm not worried about that because again, rustic. Rustic saves me. It's my best excuse for being sloppy. I'm going to go up the handle and all around just like where the paint was before. And I do two coats because the first coat is not thick enough. So here it is, wet. And I'm going to dry it down. I know that I want to be doing some decoupage on here, so I'm gonna choose this little flower, but you can use anything you want. You can use a whole strip of fabric or a square or a circle or whatever you like, but I don't mind the fussy cutting because these little scissors that I have make it a pretty easy job. So I'm just going to kind of trim around the flower and you know, if you wanna do this and you don't wanna trim it, you don't have to trim all around it. You could just make a circle around it, no biggie. But once it's all cut out, this is how she looks. Not perfect, and I'm fine with that. I'm gonna take some Mod Podge and a nice clean brush and put this on the spot where I know I want my little applique to be, or my little fabric piece to be. I wanna be sure I get my leaf in there too. So I'm just gonna add it right there. And I like that one leaf is kind of hanging down over and it looks good that way to me. So now I'm just gonna go around my edges and kind of seal it off and then brush from the inside outward. That way, if there are any bubbles, they come right out. And go under the edges. You can flip your little leaves up to make sure that you get under there, just like that. And it'll flip right back down. Now, because this is matte i'm going to go ahead and cover the entire thing so it has the same finish when it's dry as the applique does and this is how it looks when it is all dry and i think it's cute this would be very cute on a, a little coffee bar or on a tiered tray now i have two options for the bows because for some reason when i was doing this project i could not get the bow to come out the way i saw it in my mind so i started off by overlapping two gold ribbons and one of these beautiful little ribbons from Dollar Tree with the, the white background and the sunflowers. I kind of overlapped them and then wrapped them around where the little seam was between the colors and tied it off there. Thank you so much, 80,000 views on my videos. Thank you, thank you to all of you who are viewing today. So this is my first option. But for some reason, it, like I said, it just wasn't coming out in my head coming through my hands the way I saw it in my head. So I gave it a few different tries. I'm gonna take one piece of gold, one piece of floral, and one piece of jute. And I'm going to make a little shoelace bow with this. Just gonna make the rabbit ears wrap around each other, poke it in the hole, pull it, 
and then adjust the little pieces here. And I was a little bit happier with this look. And I decided to put it up there on the handle instead of wrapping it around where it's kind of in the middle. And I think I like this better. Which way did you like best? Around the middle or around the top of the handle? I think this looks better considering we're going to put a little bit of greenery in there and it looks a little more balanced. You'll see just a second. So this is what I was comfortable with. Now these beautiful picks come from Dollar Tree and I'm just going to cut off a little bit of it and stick it down in the jar and voila. That's the way I like it. Yep, that's good. Now we're going to do a little sunflower riser, which ends up looking like a bird bath. You tell me. All right, this little tray came from Dollar Tree. It's like a little jewelry dish or a candle riser or something. I'm gonna use a variety of paints. I've got, I think this is just a, just brown. And that's gonna be the center of my sunflower. So I'm gonna go around the middle of it with the brown paint. I do two coats of this, by the way, and dry it in between with my little dryer, just like this. I'm not trying to stay in the lines or anything like that. This beautiful sunflower yellow. This is a gorgeous, gorgeous yellow. It's a lighter color. If you saw my last sunflower video, then you saw the technique I used on the hanging little sunflower decor piece. And it's kind of about the same idea here. I'm just going to put down this color first, go all the way around from the edge of the brown all the way out. And by the way, I do paint the bottom of this later on because it looked white and I didn't like it. So I wanted it all to be nice. Wanted to give it a good, rich look. So now I'm gonna dry this layer. I'm gonna take a little bit of this. This is a bright yellow. Now, I don't know exactly what color it is. Forgive me, I've put the bottle away, but I'm mixing a little bit of that sunflower yellow with it and I am going to take a new brush here and I'm gonna pull that out. So starting in the center, I'm just gonna pull it out, pull it out and up. I'm not paying too much attention to the raised areas on the sunflower. I'm not real concerned about that. As you can see, I'm blending it out into the next layer because I'm going to be blending those colors together a little bit with a dry stencil brush. So this is what you see me doing now. I'm kind of flicking it outward and going in a circular motion so that I kind of blend that middle layer into the outer layer. And this is how it looks once that's accomplished. I'm going to take this little candle holder. You can get the ones at Dollar Tree. Mine was thrifted, but you can use whatever kind you want. I started off with white. And then as soon as I got this white on there, I thought, you know what? It would look more like a stem if it was green. So I quickly dried it and took some of that moss paint, that Spanish moss, and then went all over here with a good two coats. It's kind of hard sometimes to get it to stick on plastic. Now I have got some black paint here and I think this is the pavement, pavement color. I'm going to take a very fine pointy brush and then put some black dots in here. I do this because this looks like sunflower seeds little more realistic right so I'll do that all over there and now it looks like the center of a sunflower I'm gonna use a little bit of E6000 and I'm gonna use some hot glue you definitely want to use some E6000 or some other type of a glass friendly adhesive if you are going to be using doing something like this this type of project so see right now the bottom is white but I'm gonna fix it I'm going to press that down, let that glue set up. Now it's nice and strong. And I decided, yeah, we need to go ahead and do that bottom. So I just took that same sunflower yellow and went all over that with that same stencil brush I had already used. And this is how it is going to look. You'll see at the end when I stage it. Sunflower framed art is going to be the next piece. This is so easy. So I found these beautiful stickers here, and they came from Dollar Tree, and this frame. It is a 4x4, four four, and it just has two piece, pieces of glass in the inside. I took my plastic off, and now you twist these little pieces here. It's going to lift the back out, 
and then you can get your two pieces of glass out. One piece has a tiny bit of adhesive holding this paper in place, so I'm just going to pull that off, get it off with my fingers as best as I can, and then clean that up with some alcohol and a nice clean microfiber wipe. Now I'm going to lay down my glass here and start applying my stickers and whatever style and fashion that is in my little head. And I encourage you to do the same thing. You don't have to do the same thing anybody else does. You know, make it your own. So I love the outdoors. I lo love sunflowers. And I'm doing a little something different for you guys. So at the end of this video, after the final reveal, I did a little clip of my yard and walking around my yard and what the beautiful weather is like today and walking to the lake. So I even got my blueberry tree in there. So if you want to stay tuned to the very end, you'll get to see all of that goodness. And I would love for you to get to know me better and get to know you better by giving you some little, you know, tidbits of my life along the way. If that's something that interests you, be sure to let me know in the comment section. And I appreciate it very much. Okay, so you can cut these pieces off to kind of customize this however you like it. I wanted my sunflowers that I put down to have little stems. So I just made them out of a piece that I had cut down smaller. So now they connect and don't those look like they were intended to be that way. Love it. So I'm not gonna use those other petals there. I'm just going to use it just like this. I like that. And now I can put down my bottom glass. I'm gonna flip this over and put it back in. Put the back frame piece on and then close down those little clasps and then that little piece of artwork is complete. I've got two options for you um, that I'm going to show you that you can do if you would like to put some type of a backing on here or what it would look like if you leaned it against something. So this is just a placemat that I have but if you wanted some type of a backing to fit it that looks really pretty. And you could also use like a piece of colored crafting paper, construction paper, um, fabric. You could take the same fabric that you've used and use that. Now we are doing a sunflower mini tray. So I'm going to use some blossom white. I'm going to use this little tray and I got a pack of like 12 of these. I'm going to use some black and I'm going to use this sticker pack. All right, so I'm going to take that paint and just put a dot in the middle of my tray, which I have already spray painted white with just one coat. And I'm going to go around this tray to make it look like a little chalkboard. I'm just pressing down. That's like a round tip brush. And I'm just pressing down and dragging it around the edges and turning that tray to kind of help me. And I did put a little too much paint on, but I scraped it off and put it back in the bottle because I'm cheap like that. No, I'm thrifty like that. After it is dry, it's gonna look like this. Doesn't have to be perfect because a chalkboard isn't either. I'm gonna pick this sticker and place it down in the middle. And it's a little 3D sticker, it's really cute. I'm gonna press it down and I think it looks fantastic on here. So this is what it's going to look like before I put my antiquing wax on it. I'm going to use another flat stencil brush, going to offload a lot of that, and then I'm just going to start kind of flicking it around the edges, because the edges of this little tray are embellished, they're kind of raised, and I wanted to kind of bring that out and make it match a little bit better to what's going on on the sticker on the inside of the tray. So that's what I'm doing here, and I'll give you a look at that, so now you can see that you can do it either way. A little bit of light distressing, or you could just leave it plain. Very cute for a tear tray, I think. Here are our projects. Now see, I put my little bird there and it looks like a little bird bath, doesn't it? I think that is precious. And the tray here turned out very nicely. I just have everything propped up here so you can see how it would look staged. You can see right through that frame onto the backing. I love that. Which one of you, these do you like best? I would love it if you would subscribe to this channel and become part of our thrifty, artistic family. I believe in you. I really do. 
We're all crafty, and I know that you are too. Sometimes it seems easier said than done, but just practice. You're going to get it. I hope you enjoy this next clip. As a young girl, the fields were mine. We played hide and seek for hours, raised our shadows among the pines. So offshore, playful and free. Without a care in the world, I was one rich little girl. Daydreamer, kidnap me. Take me back, all the way back to them days. Running around in a gown and a crown, barefoot. Set the pace, daydreamer. 